Uh, if you know anything about an air tank, you can put what Brother Harris, 150 pounds, sometimes you can put more than that in them, one you towed around. And you can actually, if you've got that air tank, you can air up a couple of tires. But actually, when it's empty, you go put 150 pounds of pressure in it. Uh, actually, it ain't no heavier than what it was when you started that I know of. I have never been able, but I was with a friend last night, and he was telling me about his wife. They was an old couple, sweet, and they was both laughing about it. She was tickled as he was about it. And uh, Brother Danny, they went to put the air tank. She, he told his wife, he said, honey, get the air tank, put in the back of the truck. And she's like, what am I going to do with it? And she was toting it. He said, I need you to go put 100 pounds in it. She said, well, I barely can tote it now. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you something. Pressures of life can get rough. And there's probably more coming. And you're barely toting it now. And you're going to have to have some help. And, you know, it's good. To, it's good to know some things, but it's even better to have some things. It's good to know about a gun, but it's better to carry one. It's good to... To know about alarm system, but it's better to have one on when the burglar shows up. And so a lot of times, a lot of people know about some things. We got jammed around in there. And not, it's a good thing, a good jam. I mean, it, yeah, I love strawberry jam. It was right in there. It, man, it was good. And it was good. I mean, we had a great time. I mean, we had a time in there. And we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Holy Ghost. And we're going to be talking about a comforter. We're going to be talking about a friend. We're going to be talking about what God left you to help you along the way. You know, when little Johnny says that he, that he gets saved, we go and we ask little Johnny, we so quick and we know it all and we want to make sure he understands some things. And uh, We ask the right questions to make sure we can go on and baptize them. But, but probably if we ask little Johnny, John, little Johnny, when did you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? In 2013, that would be a hard, hard question for little Johnny. But we expect a 40-year-old man to understand, I think. But so many times, mom and daddy wouldn't even know what you're talking about and wonder why you're coming over and asking them. I believe that God can save a young person or whatever anytime he gets ready. But I believe when he saves them, I believe that they're baptized in the Holy Ghost right then. And I believe right then, we're going to agree on right then. I seem like I'm having some agreement on right then. Now, when I got baptized in that water, I understood it was water. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I understood it was the Holy Ghost. I ain't not the same folks that they made me on that first, then come on in on that second. But over here in Acts 1 8, I, I keep having to go back over on you because you give me a hard time. If you jumped up and shouted right there a little bit, I hope you wasn't on camera when I said that last deal because it ain't going to look good on TV. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch who you put around you because my expressions last night, uh, I was running something through Diane and she, when I was telling her, she said, I said, see, you don't never put nobody up on the podium with you to look like it. That's a disagreement look. <laughs> On the day of Pentecost, they didn't have no problem with the Holy Ghost. You understand? Because they was waiting on it. Yes. They was wanting it to be there and they was wanting it to be real in their life. Amen. My goodness. I wish I could just turn a water hose on you. I wish I could. I'm telling you, life, man, life is tough. Life ain't fair. Life is hard. The Bible's full of hard sayings. 
Job said, naked I came, naked I'm going to leave. The heart's desperately wicked. I want to come to tell you this morning, you better get yourself introduced into the Holy Ghost. You better know that when you got saved, that it was there. Because in the sept, the Spirit draw you. You can't come unto him. It, it, it's, listen, folks, it's, it's got to be better than just a good idea for you to go to heaven. It's got to just be a better idea that you're afraid you're going to hell. It's got to be something that you had an encounter. Yes, you did realize that you was wretched. Let me tell you something. Something got to start this thing. You got to heard the preaching of the gospel. You got to understand the gospel. It wasn't no, it wasn't no ghost that come in the door. I, I love when we talk about this, let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost ain't something you can't understand. The Holy Ghost is something you can't understand. King James put this word ghost in here. Add some pizzazz to it. I'm glad he did. I think it's a pretty great thing. How God come and allowed the Holy Spirit when he ascended to heaven, he could have just done what he done. We got to believe in him. Got to do the best we can. Boy, we'd have been in a jam. He said, but I ain't going to leave it like that. You, Boy, he even talks about, look, here, I'm going to put it in you. Not only that, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a plan that you stir up that thing. You whip up that thing inside you. I, I want that thing stirred up in you. When, when is the last time? Has there ever been a time? I know you got stirred up about a whole lot of things. Don't make me preach. I got pneumonia. I ain't got time to be preaching to you this morning. But what I want to say to you, has there ever been a time that you got yourself stirred up? I mean, even close to like at Christmas time when somebody just gave you a pair of socks and, and you just act like you liked them and, and you went over and hugged the neck. Have you ever had an encounter that you just want to hug God's neck for being so good to you that you got stirred up about it? Man, this Holy Ghost ain't something flying through the air, just shows up every once in a while. This Holy Ghost is a thing that said, Lo, I'm with you always. I ain't going to never leave you, no forsake you. I'm going to be with you to the end. I'm going to stick closer than a brother. And because he's so good, I tell you what, I get excited about it. I love what my friend said. It's pretty hard if we preach on this. He said, uh, that Holy Spirit, that Holy Ghost thing gets to going. He said, but to tell somebody that my ghost bears witness with your ghost don't make much sense, does it? <laughs> Boy, this thing about God. Boy, to make you shout, I've been, I've been talking about it. It's when, man, you'll be in the deepest, darkest days of your life. Man, we don't live by sight. We live by faith. If you ain't got a friend around you, you still got a friend with you. He'll pull you out of the biggest mud hole. When everybody come to see you done and out, you'll be standing straight up in the middle of the wrestling ring. Seven demons in there with you. <laughs> You'll go back home and say, man, I didn't see what I went to see. I come to tell you that God is good and he's good all the time. I said, I tell you, God is good and he's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Man, he's good. Man, we got off in there, man. I, we, we, we had some trouble over there. I mean, we, we had a good thing. In Acts chapter 1, now I'm sorry. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized you with water. Don't you look at this right here and you just study it yourself. But ye shall, somebody said ye shall. Ye shall. Be baptized, say that. Be baptized. With, the Holy Ghost, With the Holy Ghost. Not many days, Not many days. 
hands. Do you think? Mm, do you think this is just something that happened in this day? Or do you think it's something that happens in this day? This is something that's still going on that you don't hear much about. Little Johnny, if he come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and understand that Jesus died on the cross for his sin, it was the only atonement that could be shed to take his sin away, to bear it as far as the east is from the west. And he says, I know that I'm saved and you're going to carry him in the water. Little Johnny needs to know that he's been baptized with the Holy Ghost and it ain't just with water. I say that. I say that. Don't make it so easy. It's too important to make it too easy. There's got to be something that they know that they didn't have a few minutes ago that because they put faith in what God did at a cross through the death, burial, and resurrection, they put faith in that. Now inside of little Johnny is something that he can't get rid of. Look at that's done attained him. Paul says, I'm trying to apprehend that thing that's apprehending me. Somebody give God a hand clap in this house. And for John truly baptized you with water. You don't mind getting baptized with water. You don't mind your children getting baptized with water. But do you remind, do do you mind us talking to them about being baptized with the Holy Ghost? When you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you don't look like you used to look. You got a hunger in you. Look at you, 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 you. Your appetite changes. This outward man perished, but there's an inward man that's going on. I, I, man, I was studying last night. I wanted to preach about, about Jacob wrestling with the Lord. And Jacob was, was, was not doing very good. And he had an encounter with them angels, man. And he, he wrestled with the Lord. And the reason why, and he grabbed a hold uh, uh, the Lord and he, and he said, look, I'm not going to let you go <laughs> till I get satisfied. Man. Man. Jesus. He's the same. Man, boy, I see him. There must be more people, and, and we, got, we got to be on medication. I, I got a little situation myself. But listen to me, man. Man, I tell you, if you got it, you got a high and low. I mean, man, how can you, how can you, how can you, how can you be so happy sometime and then you ain't, I don't know how to preach to you. I, I don't know where you're going to be sitting at. I, I don't know where you're going to be at, but I tell you what, if you start entering to his gates and start thinking about the goodness of God, get your eyes off yourself and think about how good he done been to you this week. You think about where you'd be if it hadn't about been up for the Lord come to you Monday morning and he ain't a dying with you every week. If he ain't woke you up this morning and blessed you and start thinking about the goodness of the Lord, I think it's going to change. Yeah. Oh, poor pitiful me. My goodness. My goodness gracious. I, I met my friend Gary Taylor right out there. Outside that door, there's so many of y'all was a blessing. I mean, my word, I done lost my mind. And Lord telling me to build a church. And man, I wobble in here. Right at 7 o'clock, he meets me down there. And he said, man, you just need to go in there and sit down. And you just need to take care of yourself. Man, I got to think about that's the first time he's coming in here. Boy, he helped me jump start this thing. Walked in his office one day, and it's like so many people did. And man, you're going to get up here in this pulpit, and you're going you're gonna to be preaching. And I'm thinking about the benefits of God. David said, forget not the benefits of God. I said, Gary, I ain't, I ain't made that way. 
Man, I come over here to praise the Lord. I, I didn't come to church to sit down. I, I didn't come to church to get over and rest a minute. I, I come to church, man, I know what I, boy, if we could just get a mind of where we sitting at and what we supposed to be doing and what God requires of us and, and just what our reasonable service. The Bible said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I come to tell you, if Jesus ain't done transformed you, if he ain't gave you a, a mind to shout you ain't going to never have a mind to shout. If Jesus ain't transformed you and made you a thankful person, you won't never be a thankful That's person. Right. You can go to a seminar, a lemonade stand, or anything else. They're going to all be the same. Boy, Jesus said, my grace is sufficient. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and how good he is and what your role is it and get in it and all these other things will be added to you. Mm. Here we go. I love it. I love it. You hear me? I got messed up with some church folks this morning in that Sunday school class. For truly, John, he did. Truly, he did. He, he baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, you're not going to get this done. You're not going to get no Holy Ghost dodged in that cross. Don't you fool yourself. You're not going to get no Holy Ghost going to no camp meeting somewhere, some preacher slapping you in your head. You ain't going to get no Holy Ghost because you went somewhere and you said, I just felt something move over me. I'm going to tell you something. The only way you're going to get the Holy Ghost is when you realize, Brother Sidney, one day how wretched and low down you are and you go to climbing yourself to an old-fashioned altar somewhere, get up under a blood-stained banner and let the blood of Jesus fall down on you and say, God, why are you blessing me? Give it all to me. Boy, in the Bible said that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead I dwell in you. I'm going to tell you one thing. If that ain't enough Holy Ghost for you, you go to seek another, another Jesus. The Bible said you, you make this cross a Noah curse. And I come to tell you, when you had a born again experience, God didn't halfway do it. God knows how to do things. When he said you was born again, you was born again. I think I'm almost having to teach something. I think I think, I think I just rubbed up against something. You better go over to Colossians with me. We got to do it. I didn't even think I was going to be an ax. Oh, now we're going to stir up some stuff right here. Uh-huh. Mm. We're going to go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 6. My word. My goodness, I went to a meeting one night. Boy, I hope you get over there. going to put it on the screen for you. Colossians chapter 1. Boy, I love preaching about the Holy Ghost. Man. Boy, a lot of people treat this thing like it's Halloween or something. Huh? It's crazy. You hear me? Bible says you shall know him. You, you can't have the Holy Ghost without having no fruit. Most folks claim to have the Holy Ghost don't go to church even one time a week. Average. They'll come to church. You'll see them, hear them jabbering and jumping around like they got some yellow jackets in the britches or something. You know they ain't saved. They ain't even been to church. <laughs> Most of them don't even tie. Got the Holy Ghost. Huh? That, I'm talking, that may be that other Jesus. That may be that other deal. Look here. As we have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord... So walk in him. Boy, look at that word. <laughs> See, if you receive Jesus Christ, we're going to get down to this Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost thing. Look at, but it says rooted. Well, I thought I could just show up and, you know, just I, I got it. I got it all. I just, I just, no. The Bible said when you get this thing, this God thing, it ain't but one God thing. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, no television. That's the old school. I, I know I can't be, I know I can't get no job preaching like that. I just joked. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. As we have been taught, abounding therein with, mm, mm. do we ought to be thankful? Boy, do we need to be thankful? I tell you what, I, I don't know. I don't know how many Holy Ghost people I got, but I tell you what, just send me about 400 thankful folks tonight. Huh? Man, I don't need no highs and lows, man. I, I don't, man, I, I, I don't, I, man, look here. Send me some people. The Bible said, be ye steadfast. <laughs> huh? Unmovable. In other words, you can't have my seat. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a black brother? I come out there and say, somebody told me I had to seat. I said, man, I'm sorry. They've been shouting there. I'll talk to them. I thought we'll work it out. I promise you we'll work it out. Man, I love, man, I, I don't have no problem where somebody said, man, that's my seat. I wish I had a problem with 500 people this morning said, brother, Ed, I need to talk to you after church. They don't want me sitting in their seat. I, man, praise God. Really? Really? Man, I love that. You mean they, they got, man, I'm going to put their name on it. I'm going to give you anyone. Someone said one time, said, I went down there and uh, they didn't like me sitting in that seat. I said, well, I said, which one, which one do you want? Just, just which one? Just, <laughs> just tell me. I'm going to tell everybody that's your seat. Just tell me. They never would tell me. Which I, I want. I just tell me which one's your seat. I, I want to be able to tell them that's your seat. I, but I'm, if you tell me that's your seat, I'm going to speak and see. See, we want the seat. And we want to be set in heavenly places, but we don't want to be set it all the time. We just want to dab in and out when we get ready. We just want to shout when it feels good. We just want to amen when it goes along with what we believe. But if it lines up with the word. Come on. I had somebody older one time said a statement that won't work. He said, Brother Eddie, said, I've believed it this way this long. And even if you show me, I still ain't changing my mind. The Bible said, whomever you yield your members to, that's who you become service to obey. You better be watching who you put your knees up on the supper table with. You better be watching who you're sitting up under when they're preaching. I tell you what, they may be setting you up for something that you won't never get out of your system. That's why the Bible said, be rooted and be established. Like a tree that's, that's planted by the water, that's got roots that go down deep, that when the storm comes, and like the house is built, that's built up on the, on the rock and the winds blew. And they're going to blow. And the rain's ascended. And they beat hard upon that house. But you stood. I, I look out through this crowd and I see some of y'all that winds have blown hard. And they beat. And I'm telling you, I know in most cases, I know in a lot of people that go through hurts that you don't know anything about. All you know about is your hurts. They go through hurts. They go through pains. They've been coming. They've been coming two years. They've been coming three years. They've been coming one year. They've been coming 10 years. Look here. And they've been going through hurts. And I'm going to tell you something. Life has come and life's built on them. But it looks like to me, I can't judge either side, but it looks like to me that somewhere in all this same brother Jason, they decided to plant their feet on Jesus Christ. And I love that rock. Said on Christ, a solid rock. I'll stand all other ground to sink and sand. I'll stand right here and I'll stand on this rock. Because there ain't no other rock. The only rock you stand on is Jesus Christ. It's the only rock. Thank you, Lord. Boy, it said, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. As you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. I, I, can't, get, I can't get over it. Man, I, I love praising. Yesterday, I mean, I, I love, I was here Thursday night and my friend was here and y'all was here. And, man, I just praised that. I was praying, man. I had so much fever, man. I done broke out soaking wet first, first five minutes of the Lord. I, man, I, I sweat. It was hot. It was hot to me. Man, I got to think about the goodness of God. I said, I'm going to run me a lap. I thought Kelly Lynn going to kill me. I ran that lap. I didn't even run that lap. With pneumonia, you got a shortness of breath. 
I got this hamburger belly anyhow. And I said, I'm running, man, nothing. What I'm talking about, man, you, you, you want to get in a, a dangerous state, Brother Paul. You get into a place where you start being thankful. You want to get yourself in a place where you could have to be gone to the emergency room. You go on and get you a high, how precious that baby you brought to church this morning is. Come on. Oh, no. I said, I, I said, go on and get off in there. Just how precious that baby you is. Man, I tell you what, Brother Jason Cox, it's a, it, it's a, it's a terrible thing. I got to have a powwow weed right here. Little Connor, he's got him a nursery. And the reason why he's got him a nursery is because he's a baby. I got to have a station identification break right here. There are some children that ain't babies no more that's been going in our nursery, in Connor's nursery. They done graduated. Now, we done cleaned up after y'all children twice. They have destroyed that nursery twice on Wednesday nights. I'm talking about destroyed it. Now, I know when you're watching TV at your house, you're letting them go across the coffee table, knocking cereal everywhere, all in the floor, and you don't care. It's your house, but this is Connor's nursery, and you better get control of your babies for the pastor gets control of your babies because one of these days, Wanda, we may need to get your grandbabies in there, and we don't need that thing destroyed. Now, I love them babies, and them babies love me. When I show up for the little swimming party, and they out there, I'm talking about the ones, I'm talking about get control of them. They all, Brother Eddie, Brother Eddie, I, I can't get no more peace in them little arms coming, but y'all got to help me and teach them. It ain't nothing wrong with them. It's something wrong with the parents. Y'all got to watch your babies. Yeah. 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 The Bible said when I was a child, I thought as a child. You know, Brother Harris, a lot of times all it takes is a little thinking to go along with that Holy Ghost. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just a little thinking. We got it worked out where Sister Linda Ross could come back to church, you know. <laughs> so I got killed in a hallway. That's okay. I, I want, I want 5,000 more of whatever's going on with the nursery. But you're going to have to take care of your children. If you find my grandson in there, you dragging me, you tell him what happened, and I'll show you how to take care of yours. <laughs> I ain't having them folks come take care of these babies, have them take care of cleaning up that nursery. We got a responsibility. Man, I'm looking forward to today, little Connor. Man, he's in there singing songs. They ain't in there reciting Bible verses. Man, it's a great thing. Man, it's a great thing. Where we at? I know that was bound to happen. I, it happened twice. It didn't happen one time. Carl, brother Carl, what are you doing down here in this front row? My goodness. Huh, what are you doing claiming your <laughs> He talked to me about it the other day. I said, if ain't nobody sitting in the seat, man, it must be your seat. <clears throat> Look at that word, verse 8. It said, beware, lest any man spoil you through vain philosophy or vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Son, if it ain't got Christ nailed to it, it ain't nothing. If it ain't got the blood applied to it, it ain't nothing. If it ain't got a resurrection staple to it, it ain't nothing. If it ain't got a death, it ain't nothing. We got a Jesus that died and he was buried and he was a rose from the grave. Don't you get all sanctified with me. 
More attention do they pay to what you do. Than what you say. Ain't that something? Now this thing finna make hell hot right here. For in him dwelleth. Who is him? Somebody help me. Who is him? Who is him? Choir. Come on. Jesus. For in him dwelleth all. The fullness that man asked me down at that hospital. I couldn't believe he asked me, but I, I think he's missing a little something. And I'm probably missing a little something. He's probably missing something over and I'm missing something. I was in a hospital room. And he said, Brother Eddie, I got to tell you, I can't deny that God's doing something good up on that hill. I go by and y'all still having church. <laughs> He said, I got to ask you, and his sweet little wife over I know her, she said, come on, come on, don't, don't leave Brother Eddie alone, let him go. The man laying in the bed done shot himself. I'm trying to tell him, man, you need Jesus. You understand? You better be getting you some Jesus. Right. The preacher man sitting there said, Brother Eddie said, he's got the Holy Ghost. I was there when he got it, and he spoke in tongues. I said, let me tell you something. I, don't, I come to tell you whatever you got. It ain't working. And that same window that that devil come through the first time, it wasn't nothing to him in the first time. And if you don't get you something to guard that window, he'll come in the same window to next time and he's going to get more when he comes. If you got something, it's going to be some evidence that you got. I went to leave that room. He said, I got to ask you, Cameron, you love this. He said, I got to ask you something. I knew what he was going to ask me. They don't have but two questions. <laughs> they, they a whole lot easier than the Jehovah Witness. You hear me? <laughs> I said, go on and ask me the question. Why it's going on? They fussing now whether they're going to ask me. I said, y'all going to ask me. I got to go, man. Sunday afternoon, I got to get back. I got to get back. William, William, you better... Get to where Jesus is, son. You done took a gun, ain't he, Bessie? Then yep. shot himself with a gun. And a man sitting there telling me that the man got the Holy Ghost. I hope y'all ain't got it. <laughs> 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 Don't be praying for it. <laughs> Not that kind. <laughs> I guess he thought, I guess he thought he done run across a I don't know. Maybe he thought I was Baptist or something. I'm not, a, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Oh, Presbyterian. Maybe he thought he had me in a jam. I, he, 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 he said, I said, go on and ask me a question. Please. I've just been so nice. I, he said, brother Eddie, do, do you have, do, do you, you'll get that. Do you have the Holy Ghost? I said, no, no, man. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. He said, well, Lord's, seem like Lord's doing the work out there. I, I, I can't deny that. I said, don't you understand, man? I didn't reach up yonder and get nothing. He reached down his hand. It's got me, man. I ain't got it. You can't hold on. Ed, you can't hold on and you can't hold out. But I tell you what, if you'll set yourself in a position like I did at a seminary God church one night and you'll let it get you. Son, it'll lead you, and it'll lead you back to church, and it'll lead you to Sunday school, and it'll lead you to serve. My word, I was going to hospitals. <laughs> I tell folks all the time, I said, good Lord, I, I said, before I ever got saved, I was going to church every Sunday morning. Ain't that something? Before I ever got saved, Al, It, it didn't do me no good. Yeah. That's right. It didn't mean I was going to heaven. I didn't get no, Vicky, I didn't get no credit for it. But I want to tell you something else I've done. I wasn't no good. <laughs> I've lost and going to hell just like the guy down the road. I mean, so before I got saved, Karen, I went to church every Sunday. Before I got saved, anything they wanted to do at the church, been I was a cardinal, whatever I was in. Before I got saved, I went to church every 
Wednesday night. Now listen to me. Now you're going to say, but you don't understand I'm working, got a job. Let me tell you something. I was working. And I'd be mad at a roofer. Because he's going to tell me it's going to take four days to, ro- to felt the house in and get it in the drive. And, and we done built the house, Ronnie. And it ain't rained. And I didn't want it to get wet because it just makes for a better job. But don't ever get wet. I said, I'll just show you idiot something. I'll just felt it all by myself. And it'd be a two-story house. And I'd stay after I was already galled. Go home at night and throw cornstarch up between my legs. Look at it and sit between a fan. Hope it's going to drive in on. Don't you give me that hard. Let me tell you something. You better be glad you got a job. You better be glad. That you got the help to go to a job, and it's all the more reason why you ought to be at church. Don't you feed me that mess that you can't come. Man, I, I, I see, I, I made my mind up. I wasn't going to say nothing else about this stuff. Brother Eddie, you running folks off because you expecting too much. I made up my mind I wasn't going to do that, but I couldn't help it. How, how much does God deserve? Cameron, I told that man, I said, I, I don't have the Holy Ghost. I don't have it. I'm not as fortunate as you that I could have it. I'm wretched. Anything you give me, I mess it up. I seem to just mess it up. The harder I try, I seem like the harder, the more I fall. I said, I needed something to get me. And I needed something to start molding me. I needed something to start quickening me. I, I needed something to start schooling on me. I, I needed something to start bending on me. I, I needed something to get in me and prick me and, and poke me, Danny, and get me over here just like, just like trying to get cattle in a sock. I didn't need something to be easy with me. I needed something to come on me and consume me and make me walk and make me want to love him like he deserves being loved. And you are complete in him. Boy, I love that. You mean to Brother Eddie? You mean if I come to Jesus? That's all I got to do is just come to Jesus. Just come and let him know that I'm, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm repenting, recognize it because of his shed blood. And that he died and he buried him. He arose for me, for my sin, the understanding that he did it for me. Brother Eddie, he didn't need it. I needed it. I accept it by faith. You mean to tell me I'm saved on my way to glory? Got me a home in glory land? John 14, I want to tell you a scripture before you get to your funeral. (laughs) John 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, let me tell you something, dear friend. I go away, and if I go away, I'm coming back to get you. That there where I am, there you may be also. I ain't troubled. Boy, I'm looking for him, Pam, to come. I'm, I'm looking for a sound of a trumpet. Man, I, I don't care of a bugle horn. I don't care what it is. Man, I'm looking for the day and a moment and the twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ going to rise first. And I know it's far from your mind. You think it ain't never going to happen. But the Bible said he's going to come like a thief in the night. There's going to be two grinding at the mill. There's going to be one gone. There's going to be another stayed. Look, there's going to be two out there playing tennis on the tennis court. And one of them going to be there And one of them going to be gone Stand to your feet Sam You don't need no good dose Of loud music to come by you no more You don't need it cranked up boy. And you don't need nobody dancing all around you You don't need no feel good thing That you went to something And that spirit was high Brother Dean what we need is a visitation from God that would come up and enter your spirit today. And you understand for the first time, for God so loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Brother, there ain't nobody believes in the Holy Ghost more than I believe in the Holy Ghost. 
But it wasn't by feeling that I got it. It was by faith. Boy, I preached this morning, Sister Deborah, about Zacchaeus. We went on and old Zacchaeus, he finally climbed up that tree to see who he was. He sought after him to see who he was. Man, can you get yourself in a position this morning to see who he is? Have you ever saw who he was? If you ever get yourself in a position and you can see who he is, you can see all of his glory. You can see all of his pain. You can see all that he went through. You can see his power. And you can see him in that white raiment one day as he come back, King of kings and Lord of lords. Can you see him splitting them eastern skies, sliding down on a big white horse one time, and he's coming, and he's coming to redeem his people, and he's coming for you. If you can get there and you can see that. Mm. Boy, is it enough? Can you see enough where you're at? Have you got yourself so small a statue that you can't see where you need to be anymore? As people are coming to pray, some of these men, don't you come around them? Don't you ask them what they need? Don't you start praying with them? Come on. Get yourself in a position right now that you can see. Bow your head with me a minute. Right now, while the Holy Spirit's dealing with you, right now, right now.